Okay, here we have question eight. Um, as always, try to have a go at the question before you watch the answer. So pause the video now and have a go if you haven't done it already. So this question, we are given a diagram that shows a shape that's made up of four congruent right angle triangles. We are asked to work out the area of the shape and state the units of your answer. There will be one question that asks you to state the units. Um, it's the one that doesn't have the units given, all the rest do. Because this is area, because we're using centimetres, we get one mark for putting our answer as centimetres squared. So maybe we can do that to start with. OK, um, four congruent meaning the same. Congruent means the same. So four triangles that are the same. And they're right angled triangles. So if we work out the area of one of these triangles, um, then we can times it by four to get the area of the whole shape. So we're looking at a right angle triangle. As soon as we talk to any question to do with right angle triangles, two things should spring to mind. One is Pythagoras' theorem, the other is trigonometry. Okay, this is our right angle triangle. We're told this is six, so the bottom of the triangle is six. They're all the same, so if this one's six, this one's six. And we're told the diagonal, the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle is fifteen. To work out the area, which is what we need for this shape, we need to do a half times the base times the height. And surprise, surprise, we need to find the height. The base and the height are the two that are connected by the right angle. So once you see the right angle in a right angle triangle, you can you know those two are the numbers you need to multiply to get the area and then halve it. So um do using Pythagoras' theorem, which is this if we have a right angle triangle if we draw squares on the right angle triangle, so we've got a square here, a square here, and a square on the big side, the hypotenuse. Um, if this is A, this is B, and this is C, that's the length of the sides, this square will be A squared because you've got A times A because the sides of the squares are the same. This square is B squared, and this big square is going to be C squared. The connection that Pythagoras tells us is that the big square, c squared, is equal to the two smaller squares, a squared plus b squared. So when we're working out c squared, um, that's in this question 15. 15 squared is 225. a squared, the smaller side, doesn't matter which way around they are, but this one we've got as a is 6. So 6 squared is 36, and b squared is what we're trying to find. Now, if you draw the squares on the sides, it should remind you that b squared is smaller than c squared. This is the big side. These two small ones add up to the big one. Quite a common error here is when you're trying to find one of the small sides is to add the 2, 2, 5, and the 36, the two, side, the two squares that you're given. But because this is the smaller one, we need to take it away. And that gives us that b squared equals 189. So b equals the square root of 189. Okay, if you got to that point, you've worked 3 out of your 6, well, if you've got the centimeter squared, you've worked out, you've got 4 out of your 6 marks, 3 for this square root of 189, and um, 1 for your units. Uh, to finish it off, though, which we should be able to do, if this is the square root of 189, then our area is a half times half times six times the square root of one eight nine. Now I use a square root because it, it's easier to write it down than, than a decimal value. Um, but you can put a, you can use a decimal value there. Um, but you must keep the value in your calculator so when you do this bit it's it's really accurate. If you if you round it at some point before you do this times by a half times by six, you will lose accuracy. So we've got half times 6 times the square root of 189. That should give us about 41.243 something. And then we find 4 times that value, 4 times your answer from here. Whatever your calculator tells you, times it by 4, and that's going to give you 164.9727 something, or 97. Now, Okay, so really we should round this. We don't have to. It doesn't tell us to round it, so we could just leave it as that. 
um, and be be happy with that. But uh, we really should put maybe 165 here because that's to the nearest centimeter, and it's pretty close. But this value, incorporated with that centimeter squared, will give you six marks. There's a an answer mark for a value here that's that's accurate. There's a method mark for doing this and times in it by four. And there, like I said before, there was three marks for getting to the to the square root of 180, 100, square root of 189. Question eight done.